Okay, so there. So the other thing I'm going to try is I'm going to play. I'm going to have some music in the background tonight. So uh, I want to. It's an experiment, and uh, it's related to the. Uh, I don't know if you noticed it, but I'm going to be teaching a class at uh, Ahimsa, an in-person class, in-person in and remote. And I'm probably going to use music in that class. So I wanted to use you guys as a trial run for playing some music. So uh, the first thing you'll be able to do is tell me if it's too loud or, or not. So uh, is it too loud? No. No. OK. So we'll give it a try like this, see how it is. OK, so Supta Bhara Punasana. If you have a bolster, you can uh, set up like so. It's good to have something under your thighs so it's a little less uh, extreme at the beginning. And if you have a belt, you can use. So for those who aren't familiar with it, uh, the belt goes over your head, low and back. Bring it around your feet, and this will just hold your feet in place. I'm going to use blocks under my thighs, like so. So this is the idea. Just rest down into the pose. So as you're here, you just let the breath quiet and just be completely at ease. Supine body point, supine bound navel, supta body points. Thank you. 
All right, and let's uh, stir from here. Just uh, take your time, ease up. We're going to stay lying down, however. So, basically, what I want to do is take the bolster off from behind, and I'm going to put my bolsters to the sides. And then that will be for a little bit later when we get to Supabhadapanasana. But for now, just stretch out on your back. A blanket under your head is nice. Just get a little one for cushion and also just to get a little bit of a tilt up so that the forehead is at or above the level of the chin. So most of us need a little bit of height to get there. Not everyone, most. So just to take this pose, Sutta Tadasana Supine Mountain Pose. Extend the heels, tie the kneecaps into the thighs. Press the back of the knees and thighs into the floor. Lift the chest, take the outer shoulders into the floor. Upper arms are turned out, hands on the floor, palms up. Then keeping all of this you can, hug the right knee into the chest and extend the left heel away. So I'm just gonna move very gently into the, into the class. And it's not gonna be a particularly intense class but a deliberate one. As we often do when we're doing the Sutta Parangu Stasana series, we want to uh, do it deliberately. Now I uh, suggested that you could use a wall. Just go ahead and move through Sutta Tadasana to the second side, changing the interlace of the fingers as you hug the left knee into the chest, extend the right heel away. Um, but as I was uh, experimenting with it, I realized if I was using the wall with my feet into the wall, I couldn't look at any screen, so I couldn't really see what was going on, so I decided not to. But for those of you who have a wall handy, if you want to use it, you can do most of this class lying down with your heels pressing into the wall. So in this case, your right heel would be pressing into the wall. But that's just an option, and you can uh, take that option in, in a moment when we get to Supaparangustasana per se. And now switch legs, go through Supta Tadasana, bring the right knee up, extend the left heel. Keep the sacrum, the shoulder blades, the back of the head evenly on the floor. Extend that left heel, left knee firm into the thigh, back of the left knee into the floor. Right knee hugs up into the chest. And then move through Suptitarasan to the second side. Plug the left knee into the chest, extend the right heel. and then back to Supta Tadasana. Now, if you have a belt, take it. <clears throat> you want to move just uh, smoothly through the initial sequence of Padangustasana. So bring the right knee up and put the ball, the uh, belt around the ball on the foot. Extend that right leg up to the ceiling. Extend both legs straight and draw this right heel 
toward your head, just to the point where you start to feel the grip, the resistance in the back of the thigh. And just stop there. So we're not going far, any further than that. The idea here is just to use this as a bit of a warm up. But keep both kneecaps firm into the thighs. Keep an internal rotation on the left side, the side that's on the floor. And then we're going to take the right foot over to the right side. If you have a bolster like I do, you can rest your leg on it so you're not going into an extreme position. You're kind of moderating the position at this point. The left leg stays extended straight. Heel extending away. Still, as much as you can, you keep the sacrum evenly on the floor, even though here the left side of the sacrum wants to roll up. So you have to resist that down. And there's a way of lifting the right sit bone up. It won't really move off the floor, but it changes, it shifts the balance, the uh, steadiness of the sacrum on the floor, evenness. And then come back up to center with that right foot. Switch hands on the belt. And then without lifting the right side of the sacrum from the floor, Take that right foot over to the left side. Keep the internal rotation, just a little bit of internal rotation on that left thigh. Now we're gonna rotate all the way over. So we're gonna let that right sacrum, right hip roll up and let the left foot and leg roll over. But we're gonna keep the right shoulder blade on the floor, if you can. And then back up to center. Now bring that heel closer to your head. Probably a little bit more movement now available. And then release that foot to the floor. Switch the belt to the left foot. And bring the left foot leg up. Again, just moving to the point where you feel that resistance and just stopping there. Extend the right heel, tighten the right kneecap, both kneecaps into the thighs, that right, the back of the right leg into the floor, a little internal rotation on the right thigh. And then holding the straps with just your left hand, keeping uh, the sacrum is even on the floor as you can, shoulder blades evenly on the floor. Take that left foot over to the left side. A little more support on this side here. <clears throat> so Supta Parangustasana 2, supine extend out to the foot or big toe, out to the side pose. And then back up to center, switch hands on the strap. Keep that left side of the sacrum on the floor and bring that left foot toward, over toward the right side. Again, keeping here the left side of the sacrum on the floor. So most people don't move very much. Keep that internal rotation on the right thigh at this point. Then we're gonna go ahead and roll all the way over letting the left hip and sacrum follow, letting the right leg, foot roll to the side, but keeping as best you can the left shoulder blade on the floor. And back up to center. Once again then, See if you can draw that foot a little further toward your head. 
and then release that down. And just let your feet legs roll out to the sides. Just be at ease for a few breaths. Okay, so now if you have a second belt, people who have been in my classes are familiar with this routine. It's a little bit complicated. So if you're new to this, as you're, if you're watching this recording, uh, you may find this uh, too much trouble. And if you don't have a second belt, it's uh, definitely too much trouble. So, uh, but if you do have a second belt, take it in a big loop and put the strap around the right foot. And then, and it's turned the wrong way, so I'm get it. And then your left, yeah, I'm sorry, your left foot, and then your right thigh goes inside, like so. So the effect is that as I straighten my left leg, it pulls my right thigh, the very top of my right thigh, toward my foot. And then the second belt goes around the ball of the foot and lifts up like so. Now, if you don't have these straps, it doesn't matter. You can just, you can do this with no straps whatsoever. You can just disregard this part of the uh, second strap around the thigh and the foot, and you can even just use your hands on your thigh. So the, the straps are entirely optional, but they produce a nice effect of shifting the thigh bone in the hip socket. And this has a nice effect on uh, adjusting the sacrum and other things. So this is the idea. So now you'll probably notice if you've got the things positioned well, you can't bring your heel anywhere near as close to your head as you did before. The idea of this is we're not really doing a hamstring stretch. We're doing a, a hip sacral low back shifting. So this is the idea. You keep the both legs extended straight and you use that strap that's connected to the left foot to pull the right side toward the left foot. And then to the extent that you can, you draw that right heel toward your head. And now reach up the strap with your right hand as far as you can without lifting your right shoulder blade from the floor. Left hand is out to the side. Keep both kneecaps firm into the thighs, legs extending. And then we're gonna bring that right foot over to the right side. Once again, you see that, that you're not able to get as much lift, you can say, in that right leg because of the restriction, but you're getting a shifting in the sacrum and the hip. So that's what we're looking for at this moment. And then back up to center, switch hands on the strap, on the belt. Keep that tugging of the, using that strap to move the right thigh toward the left foot. And then again, we're gonna bring that right foot across the midline, but keep the right side of the sacrum on the floor. <laughs> Now we're going to go the whole way over into Parajrita, revolved, Parangasthasana, allowing the left leg and foot to rotate left and allowing the right hip and sacrum to roll with the right leg. But we're still keeping that pressure, that tug, as best you can, with or without belts, of that right thigh toward the left foot. And then back up to center. And one more time now, just draw that foot more toward your head, that extended right leg foot toward your head. A little bit more of a test. And then release. 
and we switch everything over to the other side. So now the second belt is on the right foot. The left thigh comes up inside it, like so. And then we take the strap, the initial strap around the left foot and draw that left foot and leg up. So again, now as you straighten that right leg, it pulls the left side toward the right foot. Okay, and then we'll reach up the strap with your left hand as far as you can without lifting your left shoulder blade from the floor. Keeping the sacrum evenly on the floor, we're going to take that left foot over to the left side. And then back up to center, switch hands on the strap, keeping the left side of the sacrum firm on the floor, bring that left foot across the midline toward the right side. Both legs stay straight. And then all the way over into the revolved version, Paridrita keeping as best you can the left shoulder blade on the floor. And then back up to center. One more time with this side. Draw that left foot toward your head. A little more intensity in the, in the extensions and the pulls. And release. Take away that second strap. And again, just let your legs and feet fall out to the sides. Just be at ease here. It's one of those where it feels so good to stop. All right, so now I want to go through that little sequence once again, only now just using the one belt, or if you have no belts, using no belts. And I'm moving my props out of the way because this time I want to have room to really extend over to the side. So you can choose how you want to do this. If you want to keep the supports on the side, that's totally fine. So we start in Supta and then put the belt around the right, the ball of the right foot, and extend that right leg up. So now we're gonna to try to test this a little bit. We're gonna give it a little bit more of a pull. So once you're positioned and you've got both legs extended straight, now take that right heel much more toward your head. So now you're gonna feel that pull in the back of the leg, the, the hamstring or the, the calf. Different people will feel it in different places, maybe the back of the knee. But whichever way you're doing, you're, you're testing how far you can go with this a little bit. Now, with your left hand out to the left side, keeping the left side of the sacrum on the floor, we're going to bring that foot all the way over to the right side. Again, extending more fully now without the support, as I am. Uh, but you can, again, feel free to use the support to not go too far away. Both kneecaps firm into the thighs.
Notice how much your sacrum on the left side is lifting. So move that left side of the sacrum down. Lift the center of the right sit bone. And then reach with that right leg and heel. And open up into the pose. Sutta Padang Gustasana in two. And then back up to center. Switch hands on the strap. You can use your thumb hooked into the right groin seam and act like there was that strap there and move the right thigh bone toward the left foot if you wish. Keep the left leg firm, bring that right foot across to the left side without lifting the right side of the sacrum. Now we're gonna go ahead and rotate all the way over into the revolved position. As best you can, keep that right shoulder blade on the floor and bring that right foot as far over as you can, keeping both legs straight. This is Parigrita Supta Parangustas. Revolve supine. Extend out, grab your big toe. And then come back up to center. And then again, draw that heel toward your head. Should be getting a whole lot more movement now for most of us than we did at the beginning. And release. Switch the belt to the left foot. and bring that left foot up to the ceiling. Again, extend both legs straight. Note the evenness of the sacrum, the shoulder blades, the back of the head onto the floor. Draw that heel toward your head, testing the back of the thigh, back of the leg. And even though there's no strap there, you can, with your own muscle action, move that thigh toward the right foot. It won't really move much, but you can engage those muscles and make that action happen, even if there's no movement. And now reach up with your left hand onto the strap, right hand out to the side, keep your sacrum shoulder blades evenly on the floor, bring that left leg over to the left side. Open up into the pose, keeping both legs extended straight. Supta Padangustasana 2. Notice how far off your right sacrum is from the floor. Here, for me, I'm much, uh, because of my scoliosis in my lumbar spine, I'm nowhere near as uh, open on this side. So it's much harder for me to keep the right side of my sacrum down. But you work that. You move the right side of the sacrum down and you Take the action of lifting the center of the left butt up. So that really opens you up into the pose. And then back up to center. Switch hands on the strap. And again, keeping both legs straight, keeping an internal rotation on the right thigh, bring that left foot over to the right side. This is Supta Padangustasana 3. And now we're going to go ahead and revolve into the Parigrita version. Bring that left foot all the way over on the right side. As best you can, keep that left shoulder blade on the floor. Keep both legs straight as best you can.
back up to center. Once again, draw that heel toward your head, seeing how much openness you have now. We've worked through this a few times. And then release. And again, let the legs and feet roll out to the sides and just be completely at ease. Just enjoy this little release from that effort. All right, so we're gonna stay lying down, but we'll bend the knees and put the feet on the floor. Have the feet about hip distance apart. We'll go into a little bit of piriformis extension here, a little, uh, you know, a little more. We've already tested that some, and we're gonna go right on into it further. So now we're gonna cross the right foot over onto the head of the left thigh, or right, right near the knee. And then hug the left knee up into the chest, and either using a belt or reaching with your hands, interlacing your fingers, you can draw that left knee toward your chest. Now, for me, I have tight piriformis muscles, and if you are like me, it won't take very much movement to really feel that tug in the right hip, the outside of the right hip. I feel it quite strongly, and I've barely moved a few inches. So we wanna just hover there in that space where you've begun to feel that tug, that resistance. All right, then release that, turn your feet to the floor, cross the left over the right thigh, and then hug the right knee in. If you can, change your interlace of your fingers, or you may be using a belt, that's fine. And then we're going to be hugging now that right knee toward the chest. And if you're like me, you immediately feel the, the pull in, in the, where the piriformis connects to the thigh. You may also feel it in the groin. I'm feeling it in the inner left thigh here too. So there, there are a number of places where you may feel this all related to the, to the hip, thigh, low back. Okay, let's release that. Keep the knees bent, feet on the floor. Just uh, take a couple breaths and we'll, we'll do it again. Okay, go ahead. Cross the right over the left thigh. Hug that left knee into the chest. Again, hovering at that point where you feel the resistance. And release. On the floor, left foot crosses over onto right thigh, hug the knees into the chest, or hug the right knee toward the chest. This is a pose that seems like a really small pose, but for some of us, like me, this is a very intense pose.
Okay, and release. Let's separate the feet out to the edge of your mat and then bring the knees together and just rest here for a few breaths. This is a nice little uh, soft sacral adjustment. All right, so let's uh, roll to the side and come to a seated posture. I'm gonna stretch out a blanket here to sit on, it's a little less uncomfortable. And I gotta adjust my sticky mat. I'm not sure why it is, but this sticky mat really does a lot of traveling. Okay, so a little more piriformis work. So we'll take, I'm gonna do what I say here. So I'm gonna take my right foot like so. So it's basically, you can see kind of uh, uh, not aligned with the front edge of my sticky mat. And then my left leg, I'm gonna overlap on top of it. So if you have really open piriformis muscles, uh, this there won't be any gap here between the thigh or the calf and the foot. For me, there's quite a quite a good gap, and I can already feel this just sitting upright here. I can feel this quite in both hips, really. So now sit really upright. So put your hands on the floor and sit really upright. Now, some of you I know don't really feel this at all, but for those of us who do, we may not want to move. But if you're okay with it, you can bring your hands in front and keeping the torso lifted, chest open, you can start to walk your chest forward. So this will intensify the, uh, the ripping of the uh, piriformis out of the hip. You know, so if you really want to rip it right out, just go ahead and put your forehead on the floor. But I don't recommend it. Okay, you can ease your way up from there and we'll switch. Put the left foot on the leg, leg and foot on the floor and overlap the right on top of it. Okay, that's, that's really stiff. That's a tight one for me, I'll tell you. And then again, you wanna get that nice upright posture. And then again, if you wish to do so, you can bring your hands in front and keeping the torso lifted, start to rotate through the hips. Really the idea is to bring your navel toward the floor. I'm only about a foot and a half away from that part. Oh, man, I feel this is deep, digs deep into my hip. Oh. Okay, let's ease up from there. And we'll go back to the first side. This time uh, I'll leave it for you all to hold a little bit longer. I don't know how long I can hold this. So then we're gonna overlap the left on top of the right. Feels a little better this time. Lift, open the chest. And if you wish, come forward. Rotating through the hips, kind of leading with the navel. Thank you. 
Okay, ease up from there. And switch. Take the left on the floor, overlap the right on top of it. Again, a lifted open torso, chest, and then again, if you wish, you come forward. And let's extend the legs out forward in staff pose, Dandasana. Let's go ahead and take a seated forward bend, Hashimotanasana. So extend the heels, have the big toe mounds and big toes touching. Tighten the kneecaps into the thighs. Separate the skin and muscles of the buttocks from each other. Separate the sit bones themselves. Torso lifts, chest open. Feel free to use a belt for this if you wish belt around your feet, but otherwise bring your arms up, inhale, exhale, extend forward, catching either your feet, your legs, or your belt, look forward, use whatever leverage you have, your belt or your hands on feet or legs, and lengthen the navel and sternum forward, arch the low back, inhale again, and with the exhale, extend and fold fully into the forward bend. And then ease your way up from there. And now we'll do um, Gomukhasan, cow face pose. So for this one, I'm gonna take the, this uh, out of the way, it just kind of gets in my way. You can use this, uh, a blanket if you wish, but we're gonna bring the right foot back outside the left hip. And then the left leg crosses over and the knee overlaps. So that here the left knee is overlapping on top of the right. You can put your hands on your thighs and lift the torso really upright. Now you can have a belt handy for this next part if you wish. But we're going to bring the arms up, take the right arm down and reach back and up with the left. Catch hold of the fingertips or the whatever kind of grip you can get. Or again, feel free to use a belt and then really extend up, sit really upright, extend that right elbow up, stare soft, soft dhrishti or gaze forward, gomukhasan, cow face pose. And release, extend both legs straight, Nandasan, and then we bring the left back and we overlap the right. And again, sit upright, bring the arms up, take the left down and the right goes back and up to reach it. And again, then take a nice upright posture with the torso and a soft gaze forward. Alpha exposed, Gomukhasan.
and release. One more time to each side. Extend the legs forward in Dandasan. Bring the right foot back outside the left hip. Cross, overlap, left onto the right. Upright posture with your torso. Bring the arms up. Right arm goes down, left arm goes back and up to meet it. And a nice upright torso and a soft drishti forward. And this. Nasan, left foot comes back, right overlaps it, upright torso, arms extend up, left goes down, right goes back and up to meet, interlacing the fingers if you can or using the belt. And then again, extending that left elbow up, torso upright, and a soft gaze forward. In this, extend the leg out straight. Now we're going to lie back down. We'll do a few final things and then we'll go right into Shavasana. So, anything you want for your Shavasana, have it set up handy nearby or whatever. But once you have that, then stretch out on your back once again in Sutta Tadasana. Legs extended straight. Kneecaps firm into the thighs. Little internal rotation with the skin and muscles of the thighs. Even with the sacrum, shoulder blades, and the back of the head on the floor. Upper arms externally rotated. Hands on the floor, palms up. And then as we begin, let's bend the right knee up into the chest. Extending the left heel away. Now move through Sutta Tadasan to the second side. Hug the left knee up, extend the right heel away. Extend that left foot out onto the floor. Separate your feet a few inches. Let your feet and legs roll out away from each other. Hands either on the floor, palms up, or on your chest, palms down. And just let go into your Shavasana. I'm 
All right, then let's take a few deeper breaths and bring awareness back into the toes. Let your eyes open. Bend your knees, be on the floor, roll to your side. Stay here for a few more breaths. And when you come up, keep your neck soft, bring the crown of your head up last. So just push up into a seated posture. All right. Thank you all for coming. Namaste. 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 Jim, I think you have an audio setting incorrect if you want music over Zoom. We had the same problem at work once. Oh, yeah? Uh, there's a Zoom setting for audio that filters out all the background noise. So okay. if you have it on, nobody can hear the music. Uh, you uh, can turn it all off. That's used if you're like a studio session. So it's kind of an advanced Zoom setting under audio. Okay, yeah, I saw that. I thought I had it set right. How about others? Could you hear the music or? Not really. It, it was like really. very, very faint and it kept fading in and yeah. out. Like it'd be a couple of seconds of silence and it'd come in and come yeah. out. And so it, it was out. aggressively filtering it out. So you have to turn ah. off the filtering it as if you have a musical performance. Okay. Uh, yeah, our, our music teacher had the musical instrument she was playing and we couldn't hear it because it was being filtered out. So um, yeah, yeah, I get it. That's right. Because it does try to focus you on who's, talking at right. any given moment. So I'll work on that, but I appreciate that. Uh, in the studio uh, tomorrow night, I'm just gonna have it playing in the studio, but um, I'll, I'll have to make sure not to uh, uh, ha have that setting on the- uh, Yeah. On the it's different. basically, it says like, if you're doing a studio session or something, so um, yeah. it's pretty accessible under yeah. audio. Yep. Very good. All right. Okay. Thanks for Thanks, that. Thanks, Jim. All right. Good night, good night everyone. Good night.